y'all what are y'all putting down? Is it C? Is it B? Is it A? Lock in your answer. You got about five seconds before we go ahead and knock this one down. All right. So, like I was telling y'all, we're going to go over this other systems. Here we go. We got Safi is being seen post MVA for neck and mid thoracic pain. The patient has a known history of primary hyperparathyroidism. Which of the following should the therapist be the most aware of during treatment? So we have A, presence of a goiter. B is hypocalcemia. C is osteoporosis. D is uncontrolled hypotension. So I ask you again, Nate, what you got is an answer. I ask you again, Sukmani, what you got for me? All right, let's break this one down. Y'all ready? So Safi's uh, being seen in this, uh, uh, being seen post MVA, right? For neck and mid thoracic pain. Now here's the deal. What is that telling y'all right now? I need you to tune in, get interactive. Tell me, what is that making you think? Anything coming to your mind right now? Is this too soon? Is it not telling us enough? I mean, because what I'm really seeing here, okay, potentially we have this musculoskeletal condition, we don't really know what's going on with that neck or mid thoracic area. We, we really have no clue. All right. So let's go ahead and move down the rest of the question. It says the patient has a known history of primary hyperparathyroidism. So that's really important. We got to slow up right now and determine, OK, what is that? What are we talking about? All right. When we say primary hyperparathyroidism, what are we talking about? First thing is we're talking about the endocrine gland. Right. The parathyroid is an endocrine gland and it's it's one of its major functions is to regulate calcium. All right. One of its major roles is to regulate calcium. Now, if we talk about this idea of primary hyperparathyroidism, what we're really saying is that there is truly a dysfunction in the parathyroid where it is hyper functioning, doing too much of its job. And one of the jobs of an endocrine gland is to secrete hormones. All right. So the parathyroid is secreting too much of its hormone that it releases. Well, then the next question is, whoa, which one of y'all knows what is the hormone that the parathyroid secretes? I need to know that. All right. That'll take us to the next level. So you should be saying to me right now that the parath uh, parathyroid secretes PTH, parathyroid hormone, also known as parathyrin. All right. And so what we know is with hyperparathyroidism is there is an increased level of parathyroid that's being released. Now, what is this is the last one. All right. This is the last one. People talk to me now. If I have parathyroid hormone, what is the role of that particular hormone? Like, what does it do? All right. What does that hormone do? So parathyroid hormone is responsible for stimulating indirectly, indirectly. It stimulates osteoclastic activity. Y'all remember what that is from, from PT class? From I'm not sure if that was in Kinesis or where that was, but osteoclastic activity. All right, maybe it was just anatomy and physiology. I'm not sure. I can't remember back to PT school. I can't remember what class that was in. But the parathyroid hormone stimulates osteoclastic activity. What do the osteoclasts do? They break down, they break down the bone. They cause for reabsorption of bone, right? Or reabsorption of the calcium. So here's the deal. All right, so osteoclasts break down the bone. What does that do, though? Well, that releases the calcium into the bloodstream. And so what am I really trying to say to you is that the parathyroid hormone is responsible for increasing the amount of calcium in the blood. That's what that's what that's the job of it. That's what it does. All right. The parathyroid is responsible for increasing the amount of calcium in the blood. So if we have hyperparathyroidism, what does that get us people? Come on now. Now a lot of y'all had this answer and I saw you saying it, you know, in your rationale that that is going to increase calcium in the blood, also called hypercalcemia. 
That's what that is. All right, cool. So let's go down to this final uh, part of the question. It says, which of the following should the therapist be the most aware of during treatment? Now that I just told you that, what primary hyperparathyroidism uh, is, what do you need to be worried about as a physical therapist? That's my question to you. All right. So let's check it out. We got A, presence of a goiter, B, hypocalcemia, C, osteoporosis, D, uncontrolled hypotension. Let's knock out this first one. Presence of a goiter. Now, I will tell you this. How many of y'all are worried about, as of PT, worried about this patient presenting to you with a goiter? And if you are, that's cool. Go ahead and put it down. Why are you worried about it? What's making you worried about it? Because a goiter is primarily seen in patients who have hyperthyroidism, not hyperparathyroidism. A goiter is actually the swelling and increase in size of the thyroid gland. That's what a goiter is. The thyroid gland, though, not the parathyroid gland, the thyroid gland. So I'm not worried about there being a presence of a goiter because I know that that's not even with this condition. It's not it's not present with hyperparathyroidism. OK, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Can we do can we do that? We got rid of a. All right, cool. Let's look at B. Great to see you, AB. I see you, girl. All right. So let's look at B. B says hypocalcemia. Now, we already spoke about this. We said that the job of the parathyroid was to regulate calcium. And if there's an increased amount of parathyroid hormone, it breaks down the bone and releases calcium into the blood. So if anything, I would be expecting hypercalcemia, not hypocalcemia right now. All right. So guess what? That's opposite of what I would be aware of or need to be aware of or anything like that. Let's go ahead and eliminate B. That's just not what we're looking for. All right. Down to our final two. We got C, osteoporosis. All right. So with osteoporosis, let's think about this. What, what really is that? We know that that's, that's brittle bone, right? Bone that's easy to be fractured. We know that's bone that doesn't have the components that it needs in order to maintain its integrity. Things like calcium, right? Here's the deal. Parathyroid hormone, this is what I want y'all to remember now going into your MPTE as well. That parathyroid hormone is kind of like Wreck-It Ralph. Have y'all ever seen that? If you've never seen this thing called Wreck-It Ralph, this movie, I want you to go look it up on YouTube real quick. It'll make a lot more sense, all right? Uh, not after this video, though. Look it up on YouTube, Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, cool. So PTH, or the parathyroid hormone, is like Wreck-It Ralph, but for the bone. And so Wreck-It Ralph, you know, comes and always like, he's like knocking down things, like wrecking things, right? Here's the thing. The parathyroid hormone goes to the bone, and, uh, 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 beats up the bone, knocks the calcium out, and puts it into the bloodstream. That's how I remember it. Well, if the bone doesn't have calcium, you know, that part that really increases its integrity and makes it strong, guess what we end up with, people? We end up with osteoporosis. This is true. I would expect this. I would expect this. Remember, that PTH, that parathyroid hormone, comes in, mm, 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 wreck it, Ralph, to that bone, making it weak. Does that make sense to y'all? That's how I remember it. Hopefully y'all remember it like that too. So I like C. Doesn't mean it's the right answer. I just like it right now. Okay, I really want to be aware of it. And now that I kind of look back at the question, I really like C because it, the question had brought in this whole idea of MVA for neck and mid-thoracic. I know that one of the things that we do to the thoracic spine is like manipulations and mobilizations and all that stuff. What do we need to be aware of? Osteoporosis. So that fits. It fits. All right. Let's go to look at D, though. D says uncontrolled hypotension. Now, I will tell you that hypertension is actually more common with hyperparathyroidism. Hypertension is actually more common with hyperparathyroidism parathyroidism now the mechanism of that is not really clear right now we can speculate as to why that's happening maybe the thickness or or the blood getting thicker because of the increased calcium that's in the blood it's it's, it's, it's thicker right um so that increasing the the uh, overall blood pressure but again we're speculating we don't know for sure but we do know that there is a correlation between 
hypertension and hyperparathyroidism, they go together. So I'm not worried about uncontrolled hypotension. There's no reason for me to really be worried about uncontrolled hypotension. So I don't like that answer. Let's go ahead and eliminate that, leaving us with our final answer of C. Let's freaking get it. All right, final answer C for those of you who got this question correct. Congratulations. For those of you who didn't have little struggles with the endocrine gland, listen, you're not alone. There's so many people that just have a difficult time, you know, understanding hyperparathyroidism and thyroidism and all those good things. A lot of times if you if you try to add in like a way to remember it, that's for you. Not necessarily what you read online, but your way of remembering it. My way of remembering it was the Wreck-It Ralph. That's what I use, and I never forget that, all right? So try to find ways in which you can remember it for yourself. It works, baby. I love it.